Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining and Mods episode 16. Today we're going to talk a bit about the new battery ratings tables that I'm coming out with. Not recommended batteries, but the actual ratings tables where they have capacity and current rating, essentially the results of my tests. There's some big changes coming and I want to go over a few of them here. There's a lot up on the board, but there's not that much to cover really. I think a lot of it's going to be later on in the video when I show some screen caps of the tables and then in subsequent um, posts about the table. Biggest thing is, I'm sick and tired of there no battery info being available from the battery wrapping companies. Uh, the ratings are a guess. We don't know what chemistry they are, uh, what even the most basic safety tests have been done. And this, for a long time now, has really been bothering me and I've been trying to figure out a way to address that. Like, how can we get this information? How can I relay it to the vaping community? And that's what these tables are. It's gonna be a work in progress but I think I have a way to do it. Basically, we deserve to know a lot more than we do now. Uh, we don't even know if they're lipos or not, and I think some of the batteries we used are lipochemistry. Now that's not inherently bad. Lipos aren't dangerous. They are, the chemistry used for lipo cells is the most volatile of the ones available to us. But if you don't misuse them or mishandle them, then there's not an issue there. They're, they're never gonna reach that huge temperature for them to go into thermal runaway and burst and fireball, etc. But I think for a lot of vapors, if they know they have a choice between a, a number of different cells with any of them, giving them the capacity and the current ratings that they want, they're going to pick the ones that are non-lipo just in case something does happen. Some people might go, I don't care, the lipos are cheaper, whatever. But we have the option, at least if we know what the chemistry of the cell is. Also, the ratings, we have no idea. There are no data sheets, there's no documentation, there's nothing, it's just what's on the wrap. That's what vendors put on their website. That's what everyone, oh, it says 35A on the cell. No, it's a 35 amp battery, okay. We deserve to know what the true ratings are, or at least to have the company stamp behind it with a data sheet and say, this is what it is. And then we just test, like we've always been doing. Safety test, the required basic safety test for a battery to be shipped. We have no idea if these cells have even passed these. Cells coming out of a China factory, we don't know. Now, for all these, I'm talking about the non-OEM, the non-Samsung, Sony, LG, Panasonic, Sanyo, Murata, Molycell, Lycian, ATL, McNair, the big established companies. They have data sheets, they've done all the tests, basic tests, and more, because they're industrial and commercial clients Demand it. They're not buying a Samsung battery. If Samsung goes, trust us about the rating, trust us, yeah, yeah, we've done the test, trust us. No, show us the proof. I want that from the non-OEM cells, the Chinese rewrapped, <coughs> excuse me, the Chinese manufactured ones and other countries, uh, even the rewrapped batteries. Okay, it's rewrapped, fine, show us the data sheet, prove it. Why should we have to be the ones tasked finding out the information, for testing, for determining ratings and everything. It is up to the manufacturers, the rewrapping companies, to show us that. Which is essentially what I said right here. They need to know what they sell. A lot of them don't. We want to know a company is not a group of three people sitting in a room, order a bunch of wraps, who rents a factory floor, gets a bunch of people together, and over a weekend wraps up several thousand cells and whoosh, off they go and they just got whatever cells they could. I, no, that's not good enough anymore. They also need to prove to us that these, these cells that they have, that are selling to us, pass just the most basic safety tests. To do this, I'm gonna make two big changes. First one is tests older or done before, January of this year, January 2018, are being moved to an expired slash outdated testing table. No numerical ratings there. It'll just be some color codings to say how badly the cell was uh, overrated in my testing. I don't want people using these older tables to go shopping for cells because they may have changed what they're wrapping. If the community wants, I'll retest them and say, okay, it's still using the same cell or whoop, <laughs> it changed. But I wanna shrink and simplify the table because the next change adds a lot of columns and stuff to the table and it's just gonna be this ridiculous monster. Uh, that people have to use, and they're already too confusing. There are too many cells on it. Who can, you know, cell I tested three years ago? We can't say, oh, it's definitely not changed. Let's move that to another table. The second big change is the data sheet and the safety documents, which I'll discuss, are now gonna be required for me to rate a cell. 
no data sheet, it gets no rating. Why should we have to be the ones to determine the rating? I'm tired of a company slapping any number they want on a frickin' battery, having me test it, and then going, oh, that's a good number, we'll use that. No, that doesn't happen anymore. You have to prove to me, or at least show me you've made the commitment to a data sheet, and then I'll tell you whether I personally think that data sheet's wrong or right. But I want that commitment from the company. Now, some of you are probably thinking, oh, Mooch, they're just gonna fake all this crap. Well, yeah, okay, maybe they could. If I ever find out there is a fake, if they ever slip up anywhere, Every single cell they have will be listed with unknown ratings or as an or as a unknown safety hazard, and I'll never test one of those cells again. There's a little incentive for them not to send me fakes. The two documents that I want, safety documents, are the safety data sheet, SDS. This is a, it's a very common document. It's required for shipping batteries. Four, seven pages long. It lists all the hazards of the chemicals inside, but it also lists the chemical composition of the cell, of that battery. That can tell us if it's a lipo or not a lipo. Uh, shippers want to know because if they ever have a whole bunch of cells get crushed or spilled or catch fire, they want to know what's inside those cells. So that's an important document. It's one these companies have to have. The other one is a UN 38.3 test report. This is an international standard, basic test for charging, discharging, short circuiting. It only does a 0.1 ohm short circuit but it's something, because any cell that doesn't pass a 0.1 ohm short circuit is a piece of junk. So at least if it passes that, okay. Uh, and several other tests. I think seven out of the eight tests, uh, cells we use, have to pass. This document is required to ship by plane, by boat, whatever. I want to see these from the companies. If they don't have it, then the manufacturer of the cell, with the rewrap, whether it's a China cell or a Samsung, will have it. And they have to get that to me. All the non-OEM cells, non-Samsung, Sony, LG, Panasonic, Sanyo, will need these documentations. As I mentioned before, the OEM cells and the big companies, they already have them. I don't need to see them. We know Samsung's have them, Sony's have them, etc. If there's no formal data sheet, I'm talking not a list of specs, I'll give them about a week after I request it. I'll contact them every possible way I can. The company saying, hey, I want the data sheet, I want the safety documents. No formal data sheet from them, not an email with 10 specs. I'm going to give them an unknown current rating. The capacity rating, I can verify. That's easy. But the current rating, I'm not doing the work for them. I'm just going to mark it unknown. For the cells I've already tested, I'm going to go back and request the documents and for any new cells coming up. If they eventually decide to create a data sheet, great. We can work out retesting sometime in the future. If there are no safety documents, either one is missing, then we don't know if it's a light bulb. We don't know if it's passed in those basic tests. It's going to be listed as being an unknown safety risk or an unknown safety hazard. We have to do that. And this is not something new. This is not an artificial limitation I'm putting on top of everything. This is a reflection of what we've had to deal with, all these unknowns. It's just now going to be listed in a table as, yeah, we don't know squat about this cell. And then it's up to you with no current rating and no safety tests or no proof of a safety test whether you want to buy that cell or not. I'm just going to make the information available. Now, some of the, there are a lot of little details on this, but essentially a company, uh, if they rewrap an OEM cell, if it's a rewrap Sony, they don't need to recreate all kinds of stuff. They can just get me the Sony data sheet and a formal email saying, yes, we rewrap the Sony VTC5A. That's okay. That's good enough. And I can confirm that or come very close to confirming that by examining the cell physically. Um, just a rant here about uh, <laughs> me not doing the work for them anymore. But basically what all this text boils down to is they need to show us what they're selling to us. They need to join our community, even on the edges, on the periphery, instead of just going, oh, you know, here, buy this, you know, it's $13. Yeah, we got it for $2, but it's $13 and, and buy this. Yes, it's a 60 amp battery. No, it's time to step up to the plate, do the same thing that the OEM, large OEM manufacturers are doing, and have the documentation that is legally required, but also a good thing to have. If you have customers, you want to show them, here's a data sheet, we can, here's what we say we do. Here are the safety documents, our cells are, have been tested to these safety standards. This is just standard good business. This is not some incredible burden I'm trying to place on them. 
and the required. The tables, an important note here, and I actually want to write it down, as I mentioned earlier, they are a work in progress. Change is going to happen. This is just the way I'm approaching it now. I may decide to do this in terms of how I request things or what I write in the table. So don't think this thing is cast in stone and I'm open to suggestions on, on the stuff that I have in the table. And I'll show you later on in this video with some screen captures what the table looks like and, and get an idea how you can read it. Um, <laughs> a big note, with this result, in most of the entries for the non-OEM cells, the EFests and everybody else being labeled as big unknowns, either un unknown ratings or unknown safety risk? Yeah, I think so. Almost all of them, I think, to start. But that is a fantastic opportunity for the companies that step up to the plate and say, here are the data sheets, here are the safety documents, and to stand out in the tables, the only one with a bunch of, without a bunch of red boxes across the board, listing them as unknown everything. So I'm hoping when one company steps up to the plate, realizes it's an opportunity, this is just a better reflection, better reporting of what we're actually dealing with all the time. Unknown sales, unknown safety, you've known about the unknown ratings, and this table's just the first step, a work in progress, to try to address some of that. And it's gonna take a lot of time to get the documents, to request them, to deal with all the interesting feedback that I'm going to get from these companies, but let's see how it works out. Here's the 2700, 21700 expired slash outdated battery test table, but let's zoom in and take a look at the columns. Going from left to right, we list the battery, its size, the capacity rating that's on the wrap, the current rating that's on the wrap, and the last column, exaggerated ratings, lets you know how badly the battery was rated, I thought, uh, in my testing. A no on a white background means I thought it was accurately rated. Yellow background with the word yes means it was slightly exaggerated. Maybe a 20 amp battery was rated at 25 amps by the company. An orange background means a moderate overrating, and a red background means the rating was at least double what the actual rating was. Namely, a 20 amp battery had 40 amp on the wrap. The expired 18650 table is laid out the same way. And here are the new rating tables, 2700, 21700 on the left, and 18650 on the right. Let's zoom in and take a look at one of them. Both the 18650 and the 2700, 21700 tables have three columns. The left-hand column just deals with the OEM batteries. Those are the ones from the large manufacturers like Samsung, Sony, etc. This left column doesn't hold just the ones I've tested recently, but all the ones I've tested because they don't change. They might be tiny, tiny improvements, but we can trust pretty well trust tests from two years ago as much as we can from six months ago. Uh, in this column, going from left to right, we have the model number for the battery, its size, and I've grouped this column by size, its rated capacity from the data sheet, what I tested the capacity as, its rated continuous discharge rating from the data sheet, and either that rating or a lower number if I find out it was a little optimistic in my testing. And then the right hand part of this is the date it was originally tested. The middle column is for all non-OEM wrapped batteries, namely the rewraps, the China manufactured cells or for other countries, etc. It only covers at most for one year. I might shorten that down to six months because after a certain point, you, we just can't be absolutely sure that the sales haven't changed. So if they get pulled off the table to the expired and uh, outdated ratings table. This is pretty well set up the same way as the left-hand column, but there's some additional columns in here to cover that very important documentation that I'm requesting. Let's go from left to right. Uh, left of these tables starts with the model number for the battery. Then it's grouped by size, then the capacity from the wrap, and then what I tested the capacity as, Next is the wrap continuous discharge rating, and then what I tested it as. And then we have three columns titled factory documentation, and that's the data sheet column, safety data sheet column, and the safety report column in this part. This is all part of the middle column, major column of the table, or portion of the table. Now, here in the examples are all TBD, to be determined, because I haven't requested these documents yet. But here is where I will be noting whether the data sheet safety data sheet, which tells you if it's a LiPo or not a LiPo, etc., and whether the safety report, which lets you know it's passed basic safety testing or not, 
will be included or if they sent it to me, ignored my request or any other variations. And then the right hand part uh, is the date I originally tested the sale. Again, that'll be limited to six months, maybe a year at the most before it's moved off and put into the expired table. The right hand main column of the table is all the important stuff you should read just once at least to understand everything that is in the table, the acronyms, the abbreviations, etc. After that, you can just ignore it. That's everything. Thank you for watching.